Social Curve TV coming at you live. I want you to stay tuned. I'm telling y'all, you'll never be the same, okay? Let's move on. Next topic, let's talk about West Virginia's quarterback, Geno Smith, and how he dropped to the second round. Jim, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Why does every player from West Virginia act like their mother and father is also brother and sister? Listen, this guy sat there draft day, pouting around. Be night before the draft, he blasts everybody in the media on Twitter. Then he gets surprised when he drops in the second round and fires his agent. Listen, he brought that on himself. First of all, uh, Geno Smith is a diva. And then when he gets picked by the New York Jets, the first thing he does is say he's going to take the Jets to the Super Bowl so everybody's comparing him to Joe Namath. Only thing that Geno Smith and Joe Namath have in common is they both wear pantyhose. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree with you on that one. I mean, you can't have any divas. There's always a lot of actors, but you can't have any divas on the field, okay? Now, speaking of the Jets, let's talk about this. Should the New York Jets have released Tebow? What do you think? I'll feel this one, all right? <laughs> you know what, Tebow is my man. I mean, first of all, I have no idea why uh, the media, has built this like animosity towards Tebow. The guy hasn't done anything to anybody. He's, he's like one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, but they make him out to be almost like this, this you know, this bad guy or something. However, um, my big issue with Tebow is nobody has actually shown that he can't get the job done. I mean, when they gave him a shot, he actually took the team to the playoffs. Now, prove him wrong. You know, give him a chance, say, hey man, you know what? You've already proven you can do it. We have to prove that you can't do it. And put him in there, even if you have to, you know, run him a little bit. I know he's a kind of a running running back. I mean, quarterback rather, he's not a great passer, but you can work on that, man. Show everybody that the man can't perform the job before you cut him loose. <laughs> if you can't prove that, it's always gonna be that question mark, that doubt in everybody's head. Well, he did this this time. You know, we don't know if he could have or couldn't have done it, but we never gave him a chance to see. So I think they should have hung on to him. Great. All right, and now let's hear what Jim has to say about that. Well, I'm a big Tim Tebow fan. I love winners. This guy won two national championships at Florida. He won the Heisman Trophy, the first sophomore to ever do that at Florida. This guy comes to the National Football League as a first round draft choice for the Denver Broncos and they make him fourth or fifth string. When he finally got the opportunity, they was a one in five team. He took those guys. He won seven out of eight games. Played the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs. They had the number one uh, playoff team. They had the number one defense in all of football. He passed for over 300 yards. Had an NFL playoff record by over, averaging over 30 yards of completion. And he beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in overtime. Now he can't get a job. I think that Tebow has gotten blacklisted because of his religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. I co-signed for that. I think that's what it is, too. Yeah. So. And I definitely agree with you guys. At the end of the day, when you're on the field, it's all about confidence. And when no one is completely giving you the confidence that you deserve, and you go on the field, and you're doing all that you can, it's kind of almost impossible to go out there and continue to perform on the field the way that you know you truly can. So, Tebow, we got you back. Game. That being said, we're gonna wrap up this segment. It's been amazing. We've had a very, very good, wonderful conversation. And I hope you guys stay tuned for the next segment. It's been Alicia Sparks, That Chick. Have a good day. Stay tuned.